We're back. I know we've been running some bests of the last few weeks, and that's because maybe things slowed down just a little bit in the high school football scene, but things are picking back up. So welcome on into Bleacher Talk. I'm Jordan Spurgeon alongside Claudia Collins. And we say that because the college sevens camps have been going on all across the state at NAU up in Flagstaff, ASU down in Tempe, and, and U of A down in Tucson. So we've had a chance to look at some of the best players in the state, get opportunities, lots of guys getting scholarship offers from in-state schools because all three programs are in a place where they are really paying attention to local talent for the first time that I can remember since I've been here. And I, I'm sure you feel the same, Claudia, but it, it's been really fun to see all this on social media. I think uh, Activate the Valley is like true for pretty much all of those programs that we just mentioned, NAU, Arizona, ASU, all of them, I guess in some way, shape or form are activating the valley, even though that's ASU's slogan, but truly seeing the in-state recruiting finally pay off for so many guys. Um, I don't want to say it's about time, but it is about time because it's really a top five state for talent. Uh, and I think that's hard to dispute these days. And yeah, I, I do want to plug, check out Cody Cameron's Twitter if you want to see all of the stuff from the NAU camp, because I know he was up there getting all the footage, all the good things there. But just in general, these camps are awesome for these guys and love to see the opportunities coming out of it. Coming up in the show, we've got the new Mountain Ridge head football coach, Andrew Johnson. We're going to chat with him later on. New documentary produced by myself and Milan Andrade. Claudia is going to pick our brains about that. And of course, social spotlight with Eliav Goodbye. But first, here's some from Andrew Johnson. And now we're joined by new Mountain Ridge coach, Andrew Johnson, 12-time state champion over with Saguaro. Before we talk about, you know, the head coaching job, do you ever bust out all 12 rings? How do, how do you, how does that work? How do you wear that? I have. My, my wife likes to uh, put that picture together a few times. We, we've uh, recreated the uh, Tom Brady hands-up look. So done that a few times, had to stack a few rings on top of each other. So it's cool to see. Sometimes you kind of like try to push it aside, but it's kind of cool to think about and see to have all those rings. Yeah. So we saw you caught up with Eric and his own read, our teammate, and there was a lot of great stuff in there. Um, definitely check it out for anybody watching right now. Check out the zone read for more information too. But yeah. the job opens up. You've been at Saguaro a long time. You've led youth programs. You've been position coaches and all kinds of things at Saguaro, like I said, 12 times right. champion. Why was now the time for you to become a high school football head coach? I felt, you know, I felt it was time to take my next step. You know, I'd, I'd done the, uh, done the assistant thing for a long time and, and really was Jason's right hand man for a long time. We started this stuff in college and, and climbed together and, and kind of felt like, you know, I was in a position where I would be like the next man up. Um, you know, the opportunity came available and sat down and talked with Jason and talked with my wife and, and just felt like it was a good fit and a good opportunity to kind of take what we've done and and take the blueprint we've built for a long time and, and kind of put my own spin on it rather than just, you know, chase, chase what we've done at Saguaro already. And, and felt like it was a good community and, and a good program to, to kind of build and put my own, my own spin on the, on the same kind of blueprint we built there. So it was exciting. You know, the eight, Tony, the AD reached out to me and wasn't the position I thought I was initially thinking about going, but the more I talked to him and the more I looked into the program and looked into the community, I felt like it was it was a good fit and and where I needed to take my chance and, and go build this thing. You're coming into the program as the third head coach in three years. That's a, I mean, it's a lot of pressure for you and for the kids, you know, having a lot of turnover can be hard. How are you instilling trust, you know, right out the gate with them? And what is that approach like on your end? Yeah, I can definitely tell, you know, talking to the community, talking to the kids, it's been tough on them to, to go through three coaches in three years. So just trying to add that stability and, and knowledge and and put put a program in place that's going to be set for them to, to understand that I'm going to be here and build this thing. So, you know, we, we've got to put in place a, a year round program where they understand what the schedule looks like, what's going to be the, the demands and the expectations going forward. And, and I think seeing that type of blueprint put together where they're going to they're going to know the schedule and know what it looks like and, and know what we're looking for on a year round and a regular basis they're going to they're gonna trust that that we're going to build this thing long term what was the first meeting with them like i think i saw a video from your defensive coordinator with some of the guys with their jerseys on and things like that was that the first yeah. meeting what's it been like so far so I got to have a brief meeting with them right before like the, the district was approving me and then you know wanted to add a little bit of excitement and, and unveil some new jerseys so 
got to get in front of them a few days last week and then um, got to kind of coach them up a little bit at the NAU tournament this weekend. So it's been exciting. You can tell you can tell they're receptive to it and, and ready to, to get some new coaching and get some, you know, guidance and, and, and a plan in place. You can tell they're eager for it. So they've, they've been great so far and they've been receptive and and it's been fun to, you know, I, I got lots of names to learn and a lot of kids that to figure out who they are. I went out there and coached on Saturday and had to have the, the assistant coaches help me out quite a bit with, with who they are and what's going on. And, and, you know, I couldn't be more thankful of those guys that stuck around in the spring and, and want to be a part of the community and the program and, and have done a ton of work to keep it in place to, to get it where it's at right now. How would you describe your coaching style? I, I'm kind of like a calm, cool, collected coach, you know, like I, I, I share my knowledge and make sure they have an understanding of what we're doing, but I, I'm, you know, I'm not a yelling and a screamer. So my, my, my football coaching comes from experience and just just sharing and trying to get on a relatable level with the kids. So I feel like when I'm getting sharing that knowledge on a on a one to one basis and they understand where I'm coming from, they're they're more respect respect to um they're more more respected to, to like learn and, and and grow and and understand where I'm coming from on like a one to one basis rather than like, you know, a lot of coaches that might might be yellers and screamers and things like that. So so a lot of times I'm I'm more the calm, cool, collected guy and maybe not always the rah rah guy. But I feel like my my knowledge and understanding of the of the game and where the kids are coming from and things like that are, are where I try to get as a, as a coach. And one of the fun things I've got for you is just uh you know coming in in the summer. Obviously, it's a lot later. Like you said, the assistant coaches that were there got to keep the program together during the spring. Right. What are you looking to accomplish? Because obviously, wins are the ultimate goal. But when you come in like this and you're reshaping a program and rebuilding, there's other things that need to be laid at the foundation. So what are some of those things that you're looking to do here in year number one? For sure. I mean, I can already see that cap the culture needs to be established. So uh, really establishing what a year round program looks like, what the expectations are, what a day to day looks like as far as a football program. And then also, you know, be being a part of the community and sharing with other sports and doing other sports, things like that. So that'll be for sure. My number one is, is getting culture in. And getting an understanding for the kids and the parents and, and the community to understand what that looks like and what we're expecting and those type of things. Um, I wasn't sure what I was coming into as far as install wise. You know, I came in for my first coaches meeting when I got to meet them and said, hey, I appreciate what you guys have done and what you guys have installed so far. Let's kind of build off what you guys have done. They're like, no, we want you to install your system right now. So, so that kind of made me you know, trying to get the culture and the schedule and the program in place for the rest of the summer. And then also trying to, to build the install out for the rest of the summer to make sure we have that in and ready to go week one. So it's exciting. You know, we've built a fun, fast, um, high scoring offense for a long time, and I'm excited to get that installed and, and going. And, and that'll bring some excitement here too, because, because that'll be fun. And that'll be, you know, we'll, we'll go score and, and win games. And I, I think those things will come along. So building the culture, getting it out there to, so there's an understanding of what we're looking for and, and how we're building the program um, so that those kids naturally, you know, want to come back out and want to stay here. And, you know, we're not losing kids to some of their surrounding schools just by building some of that excitement and those type of things. I'll close with this because at Bleacher Talk, yes, we talk football, but we also like to learn a little bit more. So what are your interests outside of football and being a coach? I mean, I have I have a wife and a young three year old, so I love you know spending as much time as I can with them away from football. Um, I have close family, so uh, we have a cabin up up in Heber, Arizona. So I like to get up there and get out of the heat as much as I can. Um, obviously, during the summer when I can, and then as much as I can, pick up a golf club and go out there and do those type of things. I love to do that too. So I'm just a competitor, and and want to go <laughs> get better at that any chance I get. So. So I like to be active and like to get out and golf and, and spend time with family and friends as much as I can. <laughs> well, Coach, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time. Best of luck this summer, and uh, we look forward to, to seeing you out there on Friday nights in the fall. I really appreciate it, Jordan. Claudia, thanks for having me so much. Coming up on Bleacher Talk, I'm turning the tables on Jordan Spurgeon. I'll be interviewing him and Milan Andrade on their latest documentary, The Fighting Freemans. <laughs>
What would you need to experience life in full motion? Expertise to provide the best care, unsurpassed training and technique. It requires the best orthopedic surgeons. Ortho Arizona. Ortho Arizona and my journey. My knees were shot, so I had double knee replacement and I needed one of the best in rehab. Ortho Arizona encouraged and pushed me in the process. Go to orthoarizona.org. That's orthoarizona.org. Bienvenidos. Here in the heart of the American Southwest, you'll find three well-known restaurants all named Valle Luna, serving the finest Sonoran-style Mexican food known across the country and beyond, and we're open for business. So come on in. We've fired up the grill and iced down the refreshments and even added some specialties along the way. Thanks for coming. Hello, greetings. Welcome back. No matter where you're from or how you say it, at Valle Luna, you're always welcome, and we're glad to have you back. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Custom ordering is at Santan Ford. Colors, wheels, trims, performance packages, and more from the factory right to your driveway. And you can even track your custom Ford every step of the way. We are Santan Ford. Discover more play for all at Harrah's Ock Chin Casino. Hi, folks. Here are your drinks. Where having fun means racking up reward credits with the Caesars Rewards Loyalty Program that can be redeemed for food, free play, hotel stays, and more. Not only here in the city of Maricopa, but also at more than 50 Caesars properties coast to coast. From Harris, Las Vegas, the Caesars Palace in Atlantic City. What are you waiting for? Play for all at Harris Auction Casino, the official sponsor of play. Unlock your home's equity with a home equity line of credit from Desert Financial Credit Union and use the cash for whatever you need. Get started now. Rates are still low and home values are high. Visit DesertFinancial.com slash HELOC and unlock your home's equity today. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Bleacher Talk. I'm Claudia Collins, and I am turning the table on Jordan Spurgeon. We also have Milan Andrade here with me today because we're going to talk about their most recent mini documentary that aired on Sports360AZ.com, which means go check it out, The Fighting Freemans. Jordan, I'll start with you, and then we'll get to Milan, and you can kind of introduce how this pairing came together. But how did this story initially come about and for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, what's the short synopsis? Yeah, so like most of our documentaries, um, honestly, it was Brad. Brad just always is in tune with so many people and things are told to him throughout the community. And I know last year uh, it was told, you know, right around football season, uh, the head coach, Ryan Freeman at Campo Verde, had a daughter with, with Ewing Sarcoma. And I think Brad and Eliav on our team, who we'll have later on on Social Spotlight, Eventually, Brad called me up and, and Milan as well and said, hey, just talk to Ryan Freeman. He wants to do this documentary. You want to come along? I was like, sure. And Milan, I know you had probably like just started like within a few weeks. And this is like right, maybe your first time even meeting Brad face to face, the six foot eight bald guy. And all of a sudden we're talking and it was all right, we're going to go over to their house in Apache Junction. And uh, yeah, the, the synopsis of the story is Briley Freeman was nine years old last year before Father's Day, diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma. And so we tell our story about that, overcoming it, and how Ryan, you know, decided whether or not to be the coach at Campo Verde and navigate the ins and outs of that while being in the hospital all the time and, and all that. 
And Jordan, you got into it, but Milan is a newer member to our team. She edits the recruiting roundup Bleacher Talk, so we can't thank her and praise her enough. But Milan, this story, from the sound of it, really tugged at your heartstrings. What drew you to doing this and eventually, you know, just taking on, hey, I'm brand new to Sports 360 AZ and now I'm the executive producer of this mini doc. I think it was the opportunity that Brad let me have, which was great. Um, right when I first got on, I told him like, hey, this is kind of what I want to do. Like documentaries is where my heart is. And he was like, all right, cool. Let's try to get you there. And I think what drew me into the story itself is I just have a long history of my own health issues. And to hear how well-spoken a nine-year-old or now 10 year old is about her own health and advocating for it and having her parents help her advocate for her health. It was just something that I, looking back at my own journey could reflect on and just be like, that is just so mature. And when you know that you have that and you can advocate for your own health care, along with having the support from your friends and family, like even the hardest of procedures and times feel a little bit easier. So I think it, I was drawn to the story personally, for sure. I think we were all, you know, immediately drawn to this. Briley's story is really incredible and inspiring. And if we're talking about inspiring, for me, one of the things that really stuck out that I thought you did an excellent job of in this documentary was, okay, who inspires Briley? So you talked to Brooklyn Montgomery, who <laughs> does Discus at Campo Verde. And Briley's like, that is my idol. I want to be like her. But then we hear from Brooklyn herself, a high schooler saying, I'm inspired by Briley and getting emotional over it. What would you want people to know about almost this like age doesn't matter when it comes to how you can be an inspiration? Like, what did you learn from Briley in this, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, I would say I learned that just kind of a reminder that uh, no matter what you go through, as long as you kind of have the right people around you, like she does, she has an amazing family. The Freemans are very, very strong. You know, this moment didn't get put in the documentary, but, you know, Ryan and, and, and Brittany talking about they didn't have date nights. They had date moments because they would just cross paths seeing each other, trying to get the household in order as well as Briley. So I would just say it just reshows, you know, how important having a community around you is. Milan, I want to ask you, you know, first stop with us here. What goes into making a documentary that people on the other end of this might not know? Because I think now we want people to go ahead and watch it. So what's the behind the scenes look like? Right. The behind the scenes is a lot of, if somebody can meet that day, you meet that day. Specifically for this story, um, we had to kind of go through HIPAA and, and to be able to talk to her doctor and to see her scans. So behind the scenes of that is it's not just getting connection with the doctor, it's getting connection in, with the communications team at Banner Children's. And then they get connected to the person who works in that specific department and then they get connected to the doctor. So there's so many different steps that have to be taken in order to even just have an interview. It definitely takes a great teammate to be able to do it with like Jordan. Um, being able to bounce ideas off of each other without really knowing like what's underneath this slab of marble. We filmed for probably three weeks, just yeah. a little over or a little under three weeks, but we were filming something at least two times a week with this documentary and they were for hours at a time. Just start chipping away at that marble with your partner and that's about it. You'll have a documentary. <laughs> Yes, we do. And if you want to see it, you got to head to sports360ac.com to watch the Fighting Freemans, Jordan Milan. Thanks so much for your great work. And of course, we can't get out of the show without Social Spotlight. That's right around the corner. We'll see you then. When you get a home loan from Desert Financial, you're not just getting a mortgage. You get a mortgage. You'll get more competitive rates, more local servicing of your loan. We even offer a closing guarantee on select loans. And because more is better, get up to $5,000 closing cost credit when you use a participating real estate broker. At Desert Financial, we don't just do mortgages. We do mortgages. Click, call, or come in for more information on our great rates, local servicing, and how you can qualify for a closing cost credit of up to $5,000. 
With springtime savings going on now at Burge Volkswagen, it's time to get out and enjoy the Arizona weather in your favorite new Volkswagen. Save with 0% financing or $2,000 customer bonus on new Tiguans. 1.9% financing for 60 months or a $3,000 customer bonus on Atlas and Atlas Crossport. Save with 3.9% for 72 months on Taos. Or drive a 2024 Jetta starting at $22,995. Rush to Burge Volkswagen for springtime savings. Burge Volkswagen, Baseline and Country Club or BurgeVW.com. Let's talk about Venezia's Pizzeria. New York style pizza. Oh man, this looks so good. Pizza doughs made fresh daily, wings, subs, sandwiches, pasta. They cater, they deliver. They have five alley locations. Venezia's New York style pizzeria. life in full motion expertise to provide the best care unsurpassed training and technique it requires the best orthopedic surgeons ortho arizona unlock your home's equity with a home equity line of credit from desert financial credit union and use the cash for whatever you need get started now rates are still low and home values are high visit desertfinancial.com heloc and unlock your home's equity today Welcome back to Bleacher Talk. I'm Jordan Spurgeon alongside Claudia Collins. And as always, it's time for Social Spotlight. Can't get out of a Bleacher Talk show without bringing in Eliov goodbye for Social Spotlight. So Eliov, what do you got for us today? Because there's there's a lot going on. It may be the middle of summer, but there's a lot going on. as the heat rises. Oh, it's the middle of summer. Keep rolling. So you know social media is hot, just like the weather. And Coach... Myron Blueford continues to do good things in the football world, in the education world, this time coaching for the USA national team. And you can check it out right here. We got players from Arizona repping in Canada and Spurge. I mean, we talk a lot about these camps, right? But how about the international representation? Yeah, I mean, this is this is awesome. He's one of the best coaches that we have in our state. And so it's great to see him have these opportunities to go do things like that. Obviously, moving on over to ALA Ironwood this year, going to be the defensive coordinator, the athletic director for junior high as well over there. And uh, he's just honestly a great guy. There's no one better that it could be happening to. I know we have a lot of great coaches in the state, but he's one of my favorites to talk to. He just brings a different energy and a different expertise. Uh than a lot of people in his own way. And so he's definitely deserving of this opportunity and to have that sort of international and national spotlight. That's a big thing for players that want to get to know him, whether they play for him or not, because that's a guy that has a lot of connections to different coaches all over the world, not just for college, but for guys that graduate college, maybe want to play football in other areas. That's somewhere that he has some expertise because of opportunities like this. So definitely really cool to see. Now, Claudia, this next one I'm tossing to you because I know your family has a lot to do with the minor leagues in baseball, and this is just beautiful. This is one of the beautiful parts of baseball. Basha alum Jamie Westbrook got his first MLB hit after 11 years in the minors, 1,159 games. That is earned, and you just got to be happy for him. I'm absolutely thrilled for him. Anytime I hear these stories of the guys that stuck it out and kept going and kept pushing, I 
you know, I don't know it directly, but indirectly, I'm very, very close, like you said, to minor league baseball. My husband played in the minor leagues for four and a half years. My brother-in-law is currently in AAA for the Brewers. It is hard freaking work. It really is. It's grueling. I mean, now they get Mondays off in the minor leagues. Big, big whoop, one day off a week. But I mean, truly, it is absolutely a lot of hours, a lot of work. Your entire life goes into it. And it's all for that moment, right? Now he can say, I was a major league baseball player. No matter how long it lasts, of course, we're wishing for the best in the long, long career. But this is, I mean, a dream come true for, for so many. Well, let's stay on the diamond because Red Mountain alum and ASU softball alum, Brianna Maha Peterson, is now going to be the head coach at Red Mountain. Not only is it great to see an alum come back, but Spurge, how about learning from someone like Brianna Maha, who we remember was such a player out there for ASU? Yeah, I mean, that's that's huge for the program, bringing in alum, bringing in a great player to coach. I mean, that's that's what you want uh, for your softball players. You want them to have the opportunity to learn from people that have been there and done that. And so it's cool to see, you know, have been someone that covered ASU softball for a while when I was at Cronkite, um, seen many of them go on to different coaching things now, and all of them are having success in their own ways. And I expect nothing different with her. She's a stud and she's going to be a great coach over there in Red Mountain softball. They're definitely going to be a program to look out for moving forward. That's all I got. Thank you. Elia, thanks for delivering the goods as always. That's all for this edition of Bleacher Talk. If you want more, you know, high school football, high school, anything, sports across the board, you know where you can find it, sports360az.com. Thanks for joining us on Bleacher Talk. We got them at Santan Ford. From the latest all-electrics to the most rugged 4x4s and America's best-selling truck. We are Santan Ford. Visit us at Harris Ock Chin Casino in the city of Maricopa, where you'll find play for all and friendly people ready to welcome you like family. Welcome back, you two. As the official sponsor of Play and the only casino in Arizona with Caesars Rewards, see what a difference it makes to play where your fun is our top priority. Harris Ok Chin Casino. Play for all. Bienvenidos. Here in the heart of the American Southwest, you'll find three well-known restaurants all named Valle Luna, serving the finest Sonoran-style Mexican food known across the country and beyond. And we're open for business, so come on in. We've fired up the grill and iced down the refreshments and even added some specialties along the way. Thanks for coming. Hello. Greetings. Welcome back. No matter where you're from or how you say it, at Valle Luna, you're always welcome. And we're glad to have you back. When you get a home loan from Desert Financial, you're not just getting a mortgage. You get a mortgage and up to $5,000 closing cost credit. Click call or come in for more information on our great rates, local servicing, and how you can qualify for a closing cost credit of up to $5,000.